Hey everyone, it's Dr. Zora here and welcome to another skill cap guide. In this video, we're going to be revealing 9 settings that every player should be using to unlock your potential and dominate the competition in Valorant. There are multiple different settings in Valorant and it can be overwhelming for players, especially for those who are newer to the FPS genre. For this reason, many players end up neglecting to carefully review the settings that they're using which can greatly impact their gameplay. By the end of this guide, you'll learn 9 settings that you absolutely must be using to get more kills and accelerate your progress through the rankings in Valorant. And if you're serious about improving, then go to skillcap.com to unlock our hyper improvement system that will teach you how to win more gunfights, master your agent, and so much more. Backed by our rank improvement guarantee, you have nothing to lose. So come join over half a million satisfied members of Skillcap, improve your KDA, and get the rank you've always wanted at skillcap.com, link in the description below. Enough with the hype though, let's get right into it. First up, if you want to play at your best in Valorant, you absolutely have to adjust your graphics settings. Graphics make a big impact on how much FPS you will be getting while playing. For those who are unfamiliar with the term, FPS stands for frames per second, which in simple terms determines how smoothly your game is going to be. The smoother the game is running and appearing, the better you're able to move, use abilities, and aim in Valorant. Because of this, if you want to play at your best, you want to have as much FPS as possible or at the very least hit the minimum FPS that we recommend players to strive for. For most people, the goal is going to be an FPS that is at least the same or above the refresh rate of your monitor. For most people, this value is going to be 60 frames per second, so you're going to want to get at least that. If you have a monitor with a higher refresh rate such as 75, 144, or 240, you're going to want to adjust your graphics settings to try to reach those FPS values. With that goal in mind, let's get right into the graphics settings. The lower you set these settings, the worse Valorant is going to look, but the more FPS you'll be able to get, which will translate to you performing better. Most professional players turn their settings to the lowest possible to maximize their FPS and performance. Because of this, we recommend turning all the settings on the graphics quality page down to low or an off. The one exception to this is multi-threaded rendering, which should remain on as it will allow you to utilize more of your computer's resources to run Valorant, thus helping boost your FPS. Other than that, the other two settings are anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering, which should be set to none and to the lowest multiplier possible. After using these settings, you should notice a big increase in your FPS. Now, the first reaction you may have is that these settings make the game look uglier, and it does. With these settings, the focus is on performance rather than how good the game looks. However, if these settings are unbearable for you to play, you can play around with the four quality settings after multi-threaded rendering potentially bumping some of them up to medium or high to give a slight graphics boost without compromising your FPS too much. We're going to get into some of the big game changing settings, but following the first setting up, in order to ensure you have the smoothest gameplay and FPS possible, make sure that you're playing on full screen mode. This may already be a setting that you're using, however I know there are many players who prefer Windows or more popularly Windows full screen as it allows you to easily out tab out of the game to do other activities perhaps during those times where you may have gotten killed and aren't in the action in Valorant. What happens with these settings though is it increases your input lag. What input lag is, is the time between you performing an action such as moving your keyboard or clicking with your mouse and the time when the game actually registers that action. Having increased input lag in the window mode options means that when you see an enemy and you try to move your mouse over to their model and then try to click their head off, it's going to take additional time for the shot to actually register and shoot. Most players won't notice the input lag while in Windows mode because the difference is a couple of milliseconds. However, in a fast paced game like Valorant, those milliseconds can be the difference between if your enemy gets a shot off first on you or if you do. So make sure that you are on full screen mode rather than windowed to ensure that you have the least input lag possible so that your shots and movements register as quickly as possible. Now that we have the general settings out of the way, one of the biggest settings you want to adjust in Valorant is the enemy highlight color. This setting can be found in the general tab and in the section labeled accessibility. The options that are available with this setting are red, yellow, and purple. What this setting does is it changes the outline color of character models. These settings were originally meant for players who are colorblind to give them options that allow them to see the players better. However, this setting is useful for every player to adjust as it can make a big impact on how clearly you can see players as well. The default setting for enemy highlight color is red, which is a fine option for most people. However, the color can sometimes be difficult to spot and end up blending in with different abilities and map designs. In these situations, you have to second guess whether you may have seen a player or not, which reduces your reaction time as you're busy processing the information you're seeing and second guessing yourself. 
To reduce the occurrence of these situations, we recommend that players set enemy highlight color to yellow. This color choice really helps to isolate character models and make them stick out amongst everything else in the game. With this setting, there is no question of whether or not you saw a player. They'll stick out clearly and you'll therefore be able to make quicker judgments and decisions to take out enemies. This reason is why a majority of professional players, such as Wardell and Tens, have their enemy highlight color at yellow so that they can solely focus on spawning players and clicking their heads as fast as possible. This next setting goes right along with color outlines and that is setting digital vibrance to 100%. If you've ever watched other players playing Valorant and noticed that their game has much more vivid colors than what you're seeing in your game, the reason for this is because they amped up their digital vibrance. This setting helps to enhance the colors in Valorant, thus creating better map transparency and allowing you to clearly see enemies regardless of how far away they are. For those with Nvidia graphics cards, the way to set this is by going into the Nvidia control panel. From there you'll head over to adjust desktop color settings and that's where you'll find the digital vibrance option at the bottom of the page. Set this option up to a plus 100% and you're good to go to have better colors that not only make the game look better but that will also help you play better. Now if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, there is nothing to fear, you can still increase your digital vibrance. The control panel for AMD graphics cards have the option to adjust hue and saturation which will provide a similar effect. Another unique setting that many players aren't aware of is show corpses which we recommend turning off. This setting can be found in the general tab and if you scroll down to section labeled other, you will find this setting. With the setting turned on, which it is by default, Whenever an enemy or player is killed, they'll leave behind their body on the ground. This is usually harmless, but there are times when you may see a body and want to quickly identify who that body belongs to and having show corpses on can make this much more difficult and stressful. The biggest example is when you're playing Sage and you're trying to resurrect a certain agent quickly but you're having trouble identifying where the player died and when you've done that, they may be mixed up with other player bodies making it hard to spot the right agent you want to resurrect and those extra few seconds of panic can allow the enemy team to make their next move or for you to mix click and resurrect the wrong player in the heat of the moment. The 6 and 7 settings we recommend are going to directly impact how you will perform in Valorant. Number 6 is using a slow sensitivity. In Valorant, precision is key and having a slower sensitivity allows you to have increased control of your aim and be able to sharply target your enemies. With a faster sensitivity, you lose that control which makes it harder for you to aim the way you'd normally like. Now you may be wondering what sensitivity counts as slow. Based on the settings used by the pros, a slow sensitivity would be any sensitivity with a calculated eDPI less than 500. To calculate your eDPI, simply multiply your in-game sensitivity in Valorant by the DPI your mouse is currently set to. An eDPI of 500 or less falls into the slow sensitivity category and over 90% of the pros use a sensitivity that falls below this number. Play around with the eDPIs in this range until you find one that feels most comfortable for you and allows you to perform at your best. Many players make the mistake of copying exactly what a certain pro uses and while that may work out for you, sometimes the settings of the pros don't match what you need to succeed. We've laid out a foundation, now it's up to you to play around with the sensitivity settings that fall into that category to see what will unlock your potential. Following that up, to ensure that you aim as crisp as possible in the back of your sensitivity, make sure you're using a small crosshair. If we look at the settings that the pros use, again, we see a common pattern with their crosshair settings which is that they keep it small. The reason for this is because at the higher level, players use the crosshair as a supplement to their aim rather than solely relying on it. They're used to their sensitivity, so at that point, they just need the crosshair to help them double check where they're at and then they can fire. A small crosshair helps achieve this goal, but anything that is too big is going to be more of a distraction than just an assistant. A larger crosshair will block more of your vision, making it harder for you to spot out enemies or abilities that are being thrown at you. Now what's going to really determine your crosshair size is the inner line settings. We recommend an inner opacity of 1, inner line length at 5, inner line thickness at 3, and inner line offset at 5. You don't necessarily have to copy these settings number by number, and in fact, we recommend that you don't, but these values are the boundaries that set apart a small crosshair from a bigger crosshair that is less viable. Play around with the inner line length, thickness, and offset until you find the right settings that are most comfortable for you, but make sure that you don't raise these numbers to values that exceed the recommendations. With that being said, we want to mention a few more settings that will greatly improve your FPS, which again is a huge factor in smoothing out your gameplay and allowing you to perform at your best in Valorant. And another way to do that is by adjusting the priority mode of Valorant to high or real time. 
To do this, simply go into your task manager and click on the details tab. From there, right click onto Valorant while you have it up and running, go into set priority and put this value at high. As the name suggests, what this setting will do is it will identify which programs have been deemed a priority and will then allocate more of your computer's resources to that program. So if you have Valorant priority set to high, more resources will be put into the game compared to other programs that may be running, thus improving your FPS and gameplay. You can also set the priority mode to real time, which will further increase your FPS. However, if you are one who likes to multitask or use other programs, this setting will further allocate resources to Valorant and will make the remaining programs much more laggier. Because of this, we recommend setting the Valorant priority to high, but if you are still short of achieving the FPS goals we mentioned at the beginning of the video and want to perform the best you can, it would be a feasible option to set this to real time instead. Last but not least, this final tip is a reminder for players to make sure that they have their monitor refresh rate to the highest hertz possible. This is another setting that ensures that your game visually appears as smoothly as possible on your screen. Now if you have a 60Hz monitor, chances are your monitor is already set to the highest refresh rate and you're good to go. However, if you have a recently upgraded to a monitor with a higher refresh rate, you want to make sure that your monitor is actually set to run at that refresh rate as this is usually not the default setting. To check to make sure your refresh rate is set to the highest possible, go into display settings and scroll down to advanced display settings. There you will find your monitor and at the monitor tab, you'll see the screen refresh rate. Click on this and make sure it's at the highest value possible. And remember, if you want to improve, win more gunfights, and get the rank you've always wanted, then check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Alright, so what setting did you find the most helpful in this video? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get more premium guides just like this one with one goal in mind helping you become a better player. We here at Skillcap want to thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next. I'm Dr. Zora and good luck out there.